Bruce Lee was the master of all martial arts masters. I know there are many men today achieving great success and are famous for their combat skills, but I can assure you that most of them have had Bruce as a mentor or inspiration. Although he lived only for 32 years, Bruce managed to leave an indelible mark on pop culture that remains vivid to this day. His combat feats were so extraordinary that even now, many people don't believe he accomplished some of the things he did. Fortunately, we have video evidence of some of Bruce's most incredible fights and rare footage. If you're a skeptic, perhaps these videos will be enough to prove that this man was indeed the real deal. The Dragon of Martial Arts Before diving into the fight footage of Bruce, it's fascinating to discover who this man truly was. First of all, Bruce's real name is not Bruce, but Lee Jun Fan. He was born in 1940 to a Cantonese opera singer father and a Chinese mother in California while his parents were touring with an opera company. Thanks to his birth in the United States, Bruce could claim American citizenship. At four months old, the family returned to Hong Kong where he faced hardships, especially during the Japanese occupation in World War II. Due to his father's his profession, Bruce was introduced to the world of cinema at an early age, acting in several films and adopting the Chinese name Lee the Little Dragon. By the time he was 18, he had already appeared in 20 films, but he struggled in school and often found himself involved in street fights. Due to his inclination toward fighting, his parents decided to have him trained in martial arts. In 1953, through a friend, Bruce met Yip Man, but he couldn't learn Wing Chun Kung Fu due to a rule that forbade teaching it to foreigners. However, speaking on behalf of Bruce, Chung managed to get him admitted to a martial arts school. Bruce began studying Wing Chun and, under the guidance of Yip Man, learned to fight in organized settings. He even won a boxing tournament in Hong Kong, but the street fights continued. In 1949, his mother decided it would be better for him to return to the United States and live with his sister, Agnes. In Seattle, Bruce began teaching martial arts, inventing his own style called Jun Fan Gong Fu, and opened his first school. After leaving university in 1964, he moved to Oakland, where he participated in the Long Beach International Karate Championships, showcasing his famous one-inch punch for the first time. Fighting Wong, Jack Man. Bruce's profile as a martial arts master was growing significantly. People appreciated his innovative approach, and many enthusiasts sought to learn from him. However, this wasn't welcomed by everyone. The Chinese were very reserved about Wing Chun and didn't want to teach it to foreigners. Since Bruce's mother was Eurasian, he was considered an outsider and could only learn the art thanks to a recommendation. When he arrived in America, Bruce reinterpreted Wing Chun and began teaching it to anyone, infuriating many purists. Among them was Wang Jackman, a martial artist known for his mastery of various arts. According to Bruce's wife, Linda, martial artist from San Francisco's Chinatown, wanted to challenge him to a fight to ask him to close his school since he was teaching non-Chinese. Wong challenged Bruce, proposing the following terms. If Wong won, Bruce would have to close his school. If Bruce won, he would be free to teach anyone. Wong claimed he requested the fight to slant Bruce's claims of being the best martial artist in San Francisco. According to sources, the fight lasted about 20 or 25 minutes, but Wong stated that Bruce attacked him with great aggression. On the other hand, Bruce and Linda declared that the fight lasted only three minutes, with Bruce winning by striking Wong around the eye. There is no footage of this encounter, but in the film, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. The fight is portrayed as a balanced match with Bruce emerging victorious. Regardless of the version, Bruce declared he defeated Wong, kept his school open and told everyone about his victory. Wong, in response, proposed a public rematch, but Bruce did not respond and no further events occurred. Imagine the excitement of witnessing this fight. 
Bruce, the movie star. After overcoming the conflict with Wong, Bruce Lee embarked on an extraordinary film career. It all started with his role as Kato in the TV series The Green Hornet, which made him known as a real movie star. In the following years, he acted in films like Ironside, Marlowe, and others, also contributing to productions such as The Wrecking Crew and A Walk in the Spring Rain, where he served as both choreographer and technical consultant. During this period, Bruce invented Jeet Kune Do, a new martial arts philosophy founded in 1967. He created the Junfan Kung Fu Institute, developing an innovative approach to Kung Fu that emphasized practicality, flexibility, and speed, in contrast to the rigid styles of the time. He incorporated training methods like weightlifting to increase strength, running for endurance, and stretching for flexibility. With the arrival of the 70s, Bruce decided to return to Hong Kong to make martial arts films, a winning move that established him as a cult hero in Hollywood. His ability to attract an international audience further boosted his appeal, allowing him to combine his passion for martial arts with his acting career. Bruce's work in Asia showcased his dedication as both a fighter and choreographer. Training footage captures his commitment. In one montage, he strikes with such power that it forces the person holding the kick bag to step back. He was known for the strength of his punches, often breaking regular punching bags. Thus, he switched to heavier bags, weighing about 295 pounds, almost three times the weight of a regular bag. Bruce Lee was not just a martial artist, but a legend in both the cinema and martial arts worlds. Bruce's push-up routine. Moving on to another topic, there's an interesting video where Bruce performs his famous one-arm, two-finger push-ups. For us ordinary mortals, doing push-ups with both hands is already a difficult feat. After the first five or ten, a tingling sensation starts to spread through the core, making it clear that it might not have been the best idea. The best among us may be able to complete a few one-handed push-ups. However, for Bruce Lee, this was a walk in the park. So much so that he decided to make things even harder, lifting and lowering himself using only two fingers of one hand. Enter the Dragon. Now, moving away from training montages, let's look at the real fights Bruce Lee was involved in to truly understand how skilled he was as a fighter and martial artist. It was quite common for Bruce to show off his skills a little. After all, he was the greatest fighter of his generation and never missed a chance to let everyone know how dangerous he was. Take, for example, this video where he literally dismantles a professional fighter while blindfolded. In less than 10 seconds, Bruce put him in several lock positions, ultimately knocking him down and off balance. And all this while he was blindfolded. Can you imagine the damage he could have inflicted had he fought with open eyes? This brings us to one of the most incredible stories about Bruce. When you think of Bruce's most famous movies, it's impossible not to mention. Enter the Dragon. This movie forever changed the martial arts landscape, cementing Bruce as a true legend and remains one of the most influential martial arts films ever made. That said, there was one common theme during Bruce's film career. People on set loved challenging him. Perhaps they thought Bruce wasn't that formidable, or maybe some had a sort of desire for rivalry. Who knows? Anyway, there were times when Bruce accepted these challenges, and one such episode occurred on the set of Enter the Dragon. The filmmakers actually asked the director to capture extensive behind-the-scenes footage for use in promoting the film, and he set to work. In a documentary about the making of the film that came out several years later, Henry Wong, the head of filming, described an incident in which an extra challenged Bruce. And he added that Bruce moved so fast. Can you imagine what that guy was thinking? Taking on the great Bruce like that, Yes, I bet he regretted that choice. One Inch Punch. Finally, we have footage of the famous One Inch Punch. Remember when I mentioned it earlier? 
Well, the one-inch punch is one of the most impressive things Bruce Lee invented. To understand this technique, imagine wanting to punch someone. Normally, you'd try to keep a reasonable distance before launching the hit, allowing your dominant hand to gather enough momentum to land directly on the person. For Bruce, however, staying at a certain distance was a pointless exercise. Instead, he preferred his technique, positioning himself about an inch from his target and still managing to strike with such force that it made them stagger back. To this day, the one-inch punch remains one of the most impressive martial arts moves. Hundreds of people have tried to replicate it, but only a few have succeeded. It's a rare strike that shows the perfect blend of power and speed, requiring considerable skill to execute correctly. Bruce Lee was, and remains, one of the most significant martial artists who ever lived. This man achieved things that no one would have believed if there weren't video footage. Even today, many who have tried to replicate what he did have not succeeded. And yet, Bruce is an inspiration, a living proof that any goal can be achieved if one is determined. But what about you? Do you have any good memories of Bruce? Let us know in the comments. Even today, our journey has come to an end, but it won't be the last. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. See you on the next adventure.